Mitch, how you doing? Good, mate. Good. I've got to say, I've known you since you were a uh, teenager. At the moment, I reckon it's the most comfortable I've seen you in your own skin. I mean, uh, as you get older, that, that normally is the case, but are there other factors involved? Um, that's probably a fair call. I probably uh, feel a bit more relaxed in my life. Um, you know, I don't know, it might be being 30 now, getting a few grey hairs, I'm not too sure. Yeah. But, uh, no, I definitely feel a bit more balanced and happy in my life. And, um, you know, I heard a few people say things when I was younger, when you get a bit older, footy um, gets a bit clearer in your head. And yeah. um, there's no doubt um, I'm seeing things a bit slower at the moment. And, yeah, I've got a good club up there playing with some really good players and a good coaching staff that certainly helped your footy form. Outside expectation. I've heard you know, a lot of people talk about this in different sports. It's the hardest thing for a person to deal with. You've dealt with it your whole life. Um, I mean, if you don't mind talking about your old man, your old man was a star, mate. He was the face of rugby league. He was a hero to so many people, including me. How did you deal with that as a boy? I always looked up to Dad as a little kid. Um, you know, I was, I was blessed growing up around the sheds. Um, obviously, going training with Dad. I used to go to the gym with Dad and... Little do I know at that age, he was like Superman in rugby league with his fitness and the way he lifted weights. And I'd be in there and spit the dummy because I couldn't couldn't go with him. In hindsight, I would have just surrendered to him. I remember once <laughs> your dad brought you into a shed into the sheds after a game once, yeah. and you were just a young fella. Yeah. Um, what about? Uh, did it make you a target of junior football? Say. Um, oh, you don't, you don't really think about it in your own head. Maybe I was naive, but um, I was always, you know, popular with my teammates and, and always, you know, one of the boys. So within the team, I never felt like mm. any jealousy or judgment. Um, maybe mum picked up on more comments from the crowd and that type of thing. But probably wasn't until I was later in my teens when there was, you know, I started getting stories on me that I knew I was playing good footy and making rep teams, but I've never been one to want to poke my head out and get more attention. And... Um, Sometimes it's been brought on from off-field stuff. But, uh, I don't <laughs> but yeah, from that side Not of things... Not by yourself there. Yeah. <laughs> but from, from that sort of thing, I've never, never once tried to um, pull myself mm. above the team or teammates, and it never sat well with me, and I, I sort of tried to shy away from that and probably... Yeah, I, I used to go under my shell a bit with that sort of stuff. Yeah, right. How'd you end up at the Roosters? Um, I played Australian schoolboys when I was 16, so I was young for the team, and uh, I was playing in the 18s and played really well on that tour, and Ricky Stewart approached... Approached me um, after that. So Ricky was a big reason I went to the Roosters and um, I never actually got coached from him mm. in first grade there because uh, he got sacked before yeah. I'd made it. But, yeah. Um, yeah, he was really good and he was the main reason I went there. That, those years that you started playing first grade, you're only, you're only a teenager, you know. Uh, difficult years to post Ricky years. Uh, a lot of turnover coaches, uh, a lot of stuff going on. How did you find it? Uh, it was really good, I think. I debuted when I was 17. Chris Anderson was the coach. Um, I came, came back from the Australian Schoolboys tour and uh, you know, I was really confident and confident. Went into the full-time training. I didn't think it was going to come that, that quickly, to be honest, but uh, I trained really hard in the pre-season. Yeah, got an early start, but yeah, I was definitely too raw and young. I, I played about 16, 17 games that year. Uh, got injured at the back end of the year and um, followed that, that next year, Freddie took over as coach and mm. that was probably one of, my, one of my better years in first grade and I got player of the year that year and that sort of year gave me a lot of confidence. Talking about being young and raw, I had a look, just had a look at the circumstances around your origin debut. 2008, only your second year in first grade, you're still a boy. And they throw you in... New South Wales get beat 30-0 and they throw you in for the decider. I, I can't think of a more difficult circumstance for a young bloke to, to debut. Yeah, so that... Like I was saying, that year, there was plenty of talk about it, but I didn't think it was going to come true. And um, We played Newcastle, actually, um, up at, at Marathon Stadium, I think it was called before, yeah. McDonald's Jones. And um, I had a, played a really tough game, and I was getting bashed around. And, um, yeah, I played a, played a good game. And the next day, the team was getting named. There was heaps of talk. And anyway, I, I got picked. And, um, yeah, obviously, I was, I was pumped. I was mm. playing, you know, Craig Fitzgibbon, Braith was in there. There was a few boys that were senior players at the Roosters that had looked after me. So that made the job easier, but um, yeah, it was a great experience, but yeah, I was certainly raw. <laughs> um, do you regret it now? Do, do you wish you weren't selected so young, Mitch? Oh, it's hard to say, like, um, am I, do I have regrets about not, with my percentage of winning in that there? Yeah, for sure. Mm. Um, I brought that on myself. I needed to deliver at times and I haven't there. Mm. Um, I'm the, my, heart, my own harshest critic, so uh, in hindsight, maybe if a bit later would have taken a bit of external mm. pressure off, playing a bit later and I would have been able to learn my craft a bit more. Yeah. You know, going in there young and losing, it, it does add external pressure. But, um, mm. yeah, it is what it is, mate. If, uh, Ricky, talking to Ricky Stewart, he has a saying that the seven owns the result, which is so true. But in, in your case, as far as origin, regardless of what 
the circumstances of the game, regardless how great Queensland were as a side, regardless of the shortcomings of, of the Blues, you seemed to shoulder most of the blame for a loss. Was that unfair? Sometimes it was. Uh, there, was time, there was games I didn't deliver. And, um, you know, like I just said, I'm my own harshest critic. If I don't play well for the Knights, I'm the first one to mm. put my hand up for my teammates. But um, there, was there was games there. I, I haven't, I'm not happy and, and super content with the way I've played in State of Origin. Um, you know, there's always so much talk around it. It's funny sitting back as a, as a player this year and watching Nathan mm. and Freddie and all these guys under the spotlight. It's what makes the game great. It's why people turn up and follow it. Um, and you've got to win. And I haven't at times. Mm. Oh, my record hasn't been great there, so uh, it is what it is, mate. And yeah. So do you, I, do, I, do, I do, as much as it hurts at the time when you cop that criticism, you know, you've yeah. got to put your hand up. Do you dread origin time coming around every year? Mitch, in some ways? Um, do I dread it? Uh, I don't dread it. Um, it's always such a well-spoke-about thing, and it's always so much... Um, obviously, like you just spoke about, expectation going into it. Yeah. And uh, obviously, as a state, we haven't had too much success. So, um, but yeah, at this age now, I'm probably a bit more relaxed about it. I'm enjoying my footy at Newcastle. And, um, you know, these opportunities come up. I've still got goals I want to achieve in yeah. footy. Origin 2, you are right in the mix. A lot of people said you were going to be picked. And you pulled yourself out of selection due to a hip injury. Were there other factors, Mitch, or was it purely the hip? No, so I was, I was really excited to play yeah. um, when Freddie approached me. Uh, we played Melbourne, I got a bad cork in the first half and as you know when you get corks, it sounds yeah. like a, a weak injury but that can be really painful. Uh, we had a week's preparation and um, I wouldn't have been able to run until Thursday and the boys were having Friday off so it would have been one training session. Um, from my point of view, I didn't want to let myself down or the team and I was honest to, to the people that mattered, obviously the coach with Freddie, I, I yeah. spoke straight to Freddie straight after about that and he, he understood. So. Um, you know, people always have their own sort of conspiracies, but yeah. I knew in my heart I was, my intentions were right. Origin 3, are you mildly interested, keen or desperate to play? <laughs> I'm not going to say desperate. Mildly desperate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm not too sure what way the teams are going to look. Uh, obviously, Nathan's still a chance. Look, if, they, if Freddie comes to me and gets, yeah. gives me the call, I'll be over the moon. Um, you know, I'll be, I'll be over the moon. So that's basically saying I'm, yeah. I'm really excited if that, if that comes about. But at the same time, um, geez, the boys played well last game and Jimmy steered the ship and there's obviously some options there. So we'll just wait and see what happens. Um, let's talk about the Newcastle Knights for a second in your form. Um, early in the year, you just played the Roosters and you would have had a very satisfying win. You're only human. You're a great competitor. Um, leading into the game, they, they asked... Roosters coach Trent Robinson about you and he spoke glowingly about you and he, he made a comment, he said, once a rooster, always a rooster. And you scored an important try that night and you grabbed the Knights badge and you kissed it. Was that passion or was that, was that a statement, Mitch? Um, for me, it was, uh, it was passion for how good Newcastle's been for me <clears throat> and probably also to show where my heart is right now. Uh, I spent a long time at the Roosters and... I owe the Roosters so much. I, um, I came in as a kid. They looked after me through a lot of things. Um, I felt like I gave my all to them and they really looked after me. I've learned a lot of my footy knowledge at the Roosters, you know. At going to the Knights as a 29-year-old, all the knowledge I've had before that is purely from the Roosters. So, um, you know, I've had such a good time at the Roosters. But as soon as I left there, you close that door, you appreciate what you've had there. But I walked into Newcastle. I'm a Newcastle Knight now and that's what it was all about. Well, Going into that side, I was talking to Joey about that game the next day and he rung me and he said it was amazing. Before the game, they put all the read the players' names out. Caleb Pong, a big roar. But he said the massive roar, the place erupted when your face came up on the screen. Joey said, now, bigger roar than Joey's ever had. <laughs> Even bigger roar than I've ever had. <laughs> that must... You're lying, you're lying. No, you're probably right. <laughs> probably on par. Um, <laughs> that must be nice. And, yeah. and, and it must feel nice to be at a place that needed you? Well, Matty, I, I remember the time when I came off contract and you were a big part of me going there. Um, I remember having a conversation with you. I was at Midnight Oil concert, actually, and I got a message from you and <laughs> said, oh, you're keen on Newcastle? <laughs> and uh, there was a few options at the time and, um, you know, I've said it to you before, but some of the conversations we had and the perspective that you sort of changed in my view of going up to Newcastle, then in my own instinct when I went up there and met up with Brownie, I didn't know much about the area, I didn't know much about the team, but... Um, you know, you go on your feeling and when I drove back from, from Newcastle, I called Dad and I said, oh, there's something about this place. I've got, I've got a feeling there's just something in me that I want to go there and, um, and I was right. So, mm. um, 
Yeah, I'm just really grateful that um, the town's taken me in. Mm. Um, to be honest, when I went there, I didn't know I'd enjoy it as much as I have. I thought it was going to be a good experience and I was going to give my all, but it's been uh, an awesome experience. Mm. A great bunch of boys in the club, as you know, is, it's, it's built on such good um, character and all the people involved are unreal. You're in a real sweet spot of form at the moment, Mitch. Um, what's it down to? Do you, can you explain it? Um, I feel like at the start of the year, um, we were struggling for a few bit of combination and me personally as captain, you look within, um, we weren't getting results and you know, as the leader of the club and as halfback when you're attack struggling and the team's just not flowing, you know, you have sleepless nights. I remember the Parramatta game I went in, I just said, I'm just going to make sure we win no matter what here. And I just tried to fight and compete on everything. And that's just sort of been my, my recipe for the last 10 weeks. I've just been trying to compete, stay in the moment and uh, work hard for my teammates and set the example at training on the field. And um, for me, I think football, the football stuff comes naturally off the back of that, um, you know, my running game and my vision sort of naturally has always come back on the back of that sort of stuff. And, and as a captain, it's your job to set the example at training and on the field with mm. all the, the dirty stuff. Otherwise, no one's going to follow you or, mm. or do it if, you, if your leader's not doing it. And I've been putting all my effort into that, trying to set, set the example for the boys, and we're getting a good reaction. What, uh, lastly, what's a successful year for the Newcastle Knights, in your opinion, Mitch? Um, well, definitely top eight. Um, for us, uh, we've just got a real healthy group up there at the moment. Everyone's fit. Um, and everyone's motivated. We're coming to train every day, looking forward to improving and being in this sort of situation at the Roosters and you can really build momentum when you, you keep working hard and you've got a good group. We've got a really good group, good, good bunch of boys, good coaching staff. So um, yeah, I'd like to say top eight's something that we'll be really disappointed if we don't make and mm. obviously you want to push up a bit higher. We're going to win the cop, aren't we? <laughs> I hope so. Good on you, Mitch. Thank you, mate. <laughs>